Hey, do you remember this electrical installation video that we shot like probably five years ago? It was on my mom's truck camper and she has recently sold it and gone to this. And it's in dire need of an electrical system upgrade. So we're gonna take it from this to this, add 1200 watts of solar and take you along every step of the process. So let's head to the shop, see what we're dealing with and get started. Over here on the driver's side of the motorhome, we have two things that are very important. And the first one is the generator right down here. This is a big enough generator to be able to run all 30 amps of power that this camper needs to run at full capacity. So it's a pretty big one. Uh, you know, as long as you are willing to burn the fuel to run the generator. The other thing is the shore power cord right back here. Here is the 30 amp shore power cord. And the 30 amp shore power cord is actually um, attached uh, to a junction box in the back of this compartment. So there's no shore power inlet. It's just a cord, uh, but nothing really changes electrically from having a hardwired shore power cord to having an inlet. It's the same electrically. Now let's go on the other side and see what we're dealing with. And over here on the passenger side is this gigantic compartment. And uh, this is where we're actually going to put all the batteries and the inverter charger, charge controllers, all that kind of stuff. And unfortunately, the uh, little outdoor beer fridge here is going to have to go, but there's another fridge on the inside, so it's okay. Now we skip going up onto the roof, but this compartment is pretty important because it has the ends of our solar ready wires. Up on the roof, there's all kinds of room for solar panels and there's two MC4 connectors with a positive and negative wire coming down into this compartment down here. And we're gonna have two sets of wires, one coming from the solar panels up top where we're gonna put those and the other two are going to the batteries. And if you keep watching, we'll show you how to figure out which is going to where later on in the video. Now let's go just right inside the door here and check out our factory batteries underneath the step. There's just a single lead acid battery. Uh, I don't see the sides on it immediately, but it's very small and won't power this camper for really any amount of time unless it's connected to shore power or the generator's running. So this is going to be replaced. Inside of the camper, there are all kinds of electrics. There's switches here for 12 different zones of lighting, and there's an air conditioner there, and a microwave here, and a refrigerator here, and a TV here, and there's even a pre-built-in inverter here that is delivering power to those two outlets, this TV, and the TV that's outside, which all that seems really overwhelming to think about, but we aren't going to be rewiring this camper. We're just gonna be splicing in to the factory equipment for our upgrade to deliver power to that. And here's what we're looking at right behind the breaker box. Here is the factory breaker box. And here is the wire coming into the factory breaker box, this orange one right here. This is a 30 amp RV, which means that there's a 30 amp breaker on the main breaker. To find the wire that's coming into the back of the breaker box, you're going to find that 30 amp breaker and then trace that wire back to where it comes out here. And you'll have a corresponding 10 to with the ground wire. It's usually orange, but it's always gonna be written on the wire. The other box is back there. This is the transfer switch. And the transfer switch is going to be in place whenever we have a generator and shore power. The transfer switch is deciding which power source is active, shore power or the generator, and it's forwarding that power to the breaker box. The breaker box doesn't care where it's getting power from, all it knows is it's getting power. The transfer switch is just forwarding the active power source. This other box back here is the converter, and it's taking the 110 volt power from the breaker box and converting it to 12 volt DC power to power all the 12 volt DC lights, fans, the refrigerator winds on that mode, everything that's in this fuse panel right here. And there is actually a factory installed inverter in this camper <laughs> somewhere. I, I couldn't find it, but I know it's there because there's a uh, on off switch on the wall over there and there's an inverter uh, space on this right here. And the fact that there's an inverter space on the breaker box cover tells me that the power is going to that 
factory installed inverter and there's likely a secondary transfer switch that's going to decide between powering it from this breaker box, which is powered by shore or generator, remember, or powering from the inverter that's pre-installed. Now we are going to show you how to deal with something like that when we get to the Victron MultiPlus section of this install, so just keep watching. Now that we know what we're dealing with, here's the plan for the upgrade. Here's the plan. We're going to add two 270 amp hour Battleborn lithium batteries, a Victron Lynx distributor for power distribution, wire the factory 12 volt wiring to the Lynx distributor and remove the factory battery, splice in a Victron MultiPlus inverter charger to the factory 120 volt system, add 1200 watts of solar, and upgrade the alternator charging. For our batteries, we are wiring two 270 amp hour Battleborn GC3s in parallel to make a 540 amp hour battery bank. Now these are the heated versions, so we're also going to show you how to wire in a switch to enable or disable the thermostat controlled internal battery heaters. The parts we're using for this chapter are from the Explorus Life battery bank wiring kit for two batteries. We measured, cut, stripped, crimped, and heat shrink the positive wire that goes between our two batteries, and then did the same with our negative wire. We sanded our lugs to get rid of any burrs or imperfections, and then used alcohol on a rag to wipe all of our electrical surfaces to get rid of any dirt or oil. In the spirit of keeping this video a little bit shorter, we're only going to show the cut, strip, crimp, and heat shrink process this one time, but it's going to happen with every wire that we make. If you need more detailed information on how to make wires, we've got a playlist for that right up here. And then Steph is going to attach them to the batteries to make our battery bank. We removed the positive and negative terminal covers and then moved the batteries into place. Next, we secured the batteries to the floor. Then we put our negative wire in place. We put our bolt and washer in through the back of the terminal and through the lug and added our washer and nut on top of the lug and repeated it for the other side of the negative wire and tightened. And I did not fully tighten this bolt right here because we're going to be connecting that one to the Lynx distributor in the next step. Um, but now I'm going to do the exact same thing on the positive wire. Next, we're going to connect all of our wiring for the internal battery heaters for these batteries. So to do that, we're going to remove these two feet we're going to remove these two screws back here. And then we're going to connect the jumper wire in between the two batteries. We're going to connect the power wire to this terminal. And lastly, we will connect the switch. Then we replaced our mounting feet and replaced the terminal cover. And we're going to leave this cover off for right now because we're going to need to get to this terminal to connect to the Lynx distributor. And we're going to leave these covers off because, well, they're impossible to get to. Now our new batteries are installed, but we have no way to distribute the power to our loads and chargers or monitor their state of charge. And that's coming up next. The Lynx distributor allows us to take the power stored in the batteries and give it a safe means to distribute power to our loads and accept power from our chargers. This is also the step where we're going to install our battery monitor so we know how empty or full our batteries are. The parts we're using in this chapter are from the Explorus Life Lynx distributor wiring kit and the Explorus Life chassis ground wiring kit. We attached all of our lugs and heat shrink from the wiring kit with magic. And now we're ready to wire up our Lynx distributor. We attach the Lynx adapter to the positive bus bar of the Lynx distributor by putting the bolt through a washer, the Lynx adapter, the Lynx distributor, washer, lock washer, and nut, and then repeated the process on the negative bus bar. And then we put the master disconnect switch onto the Lynx adapter on the positive bus bar and attached our short red wire with the 3 8 inch lug to the master disconnect. 
The other end of this wire with the 5 16 inch lug is going to our ANL fuse holder. And then we attached our 400 amp ANL fuse, making sure that there are no washers between the fuse and fuse holder. And then we replaced the hardware and added the long wire that will go to the battery bank to the last stud of the ANL fuse holder. With the loads and chargers side of the shunt towards the Lynx distributor, we attached the shunt to the Lynx adapter with the washer and lock washer on top of the adapter. And then on the battery side of the shunt, we attached the 3 8 inch lug from the negative wire. And then we tightened everything down until snug and then put on the back of the master disconnect. Next we remove the cover of the Lynx distributor. And then we grab the small red power wire from the BMV712 box and it's way too long for our needs, so we're going to cut out the slack and use our crimpers and heat gun to put on a butt splice connector. Next we attach the ring terminal to the far stud of the positive bus bar in the Lynx distributor and then push the ferrule into the B1 terminal on the shunt. This is going to deliver power to the computer board on the side of the shunt. The data cable with the BMV712 will go into the side of the shunt and the back of the gauge that we will mount in a hole that we drilled in a cabinet in the motorhome. Now before we head to the camper, we're going to remove all the nuts, lock washers, and washers from the positive bus bar, fuse holder studs, and the negative bus bar and set those aside for later. We're also going to go ahead and break off the little plastic separators as shown here. Now, there are two nuts on the fuse holder stud. Don't remove the bottom one, just the top one. The fuse is going to set on the bottom one. In this RV, we'll be placing the Lynx distributor on its back and wire in this wire duct, which we will leave a link for in the video description. Now, this was a pretty tough angle to shoot, so here's a graphic showing how we wired our negative wire from the Lynx to the battery bank. Bolt, washer, terminal, wire lug, wire lug, washer, nut, and then tighten. Then we attached our positive wire from the ANL fuse holder to the positive terminal on the battery bank in the same order. Bolt, terminal, wire lug, wire lug, battery heater, washer, nut, and tighten. Next, we secured our fuse holder to the floor. Then, using the BMV712 shunt mounting hardware, we put our shunt spacers in place and screwed it down. Then we put our master disconnect spacers in place and screwed it down. Then we secured our Lynx distributor to the floor. Then we snapped the little separator off of the ANL fuse holder cover and snapped it into place. Now we can run our data cable through the wall and attach it to our BMV712 monitor and mount it in the kitchen cabinet. Next, we can go ahead and open the Victron Connect app to program our BMV712. Going to make sure the master switch is turned on and the BMV712 should show up in the Victron Connect app. Tap to select, put in the default password and update the firmware as necessary. Follow any on-screen directions and once we're at the main screen of the BMV, tap the cog to access the settings. Set the battery bank capacity to 540 for our 540 amp hour battery bank, auxiliary input to none, then press battery. And here is the cheat sheet that we're using for programming the BMV712 settings specifically for these batteries. Now those settings are for our specific battery bank. Now if you're using a different brand or manufacturer of batteries, you're going to want to get with your manufacturer to see what settings they recommend for the BMV712. If you're using a different size of different amp hours of battery bank of Battleborn batteries, uh, you can just change that within the app under the battery bank size. Now that all that is connected and programmed, it's a good time to connect the chassis ground wire from the chassis ground wiring kit, which is simply four out wire with a 5 16 inch lug crimped onto each end, one of which end is going to any space on the negative bus bar, which we're attaching it here on the end on top of the Lynx adapters, and the other end is going underneath the camper and attaching to any solidly attached piece of metal, which is our case is the frame. There was already a hole here and I've just attached the lug uh, through that hole uh, with the included hardware from the kit. 
With the Lynx distributor fully installed, we now have a great way to attach all of our components to the system. We can turn the system on and off with our master disconnect switch, and we can monitor our battery status with our BMV712 battery monitor. But the old crappy batteries are still powering the camper, so we need to fix that, and that's coming up next. We want to use our new battery to supply power to all the pre-existing wiring throughout the camper, like jacks, slides, 12 volt fans, lights, and all of that good stuff. But instead of rewiring every single component and branch circuit, we're simply going to supply power to the factory battery location so that all of the pre-existing branch circuits can remain as they are. The parts we're using in this chapter are from the Explorus Life Battery Bank Relocation Kit. We attached our wire lugs and heat shrink from the kit to our two gauge wire, and then headed to the camper and fed our wires through the wall, under the camper, and to the OEM battery location under the front step. The junction studs from the kit are replacing the factory lead acid battery, so we will unbolt it and get this out of the way. Then we screwed the junction studs in place and put the new wires onto the junction studs. All of the wires that were attached to the negative terminals of the OEM batteries go to the negative junction stud. And the wires that were connected to the positive battery terminals go to the positive junction stud. Next, we're going to connect the wires to the Lynx distributor. First, I'm gonna make sure my master disconnect switch is off, remove the separator, Put the negative wire in place, replace the washer, lock washer, and nut, and actually remember to snap the separator back into place. Put the mega fuse onto the positive bus bar, the positive wire onto the fuse, and replace the washers, lock washers, and nuts, and tighten. And since we forgot the cover earlier, we're putting it back in place under the positive wire here. Now we can turn our master battery switch on, and we can turn on some of our DC loads around the camper and see that they work perfectly. We can also check out our Victron Connect app and see the amperage used going up and down as we turn our lights on and off. With the new battery wired to the pre-existing circuits, the camper is now operating with much more power. And if that's all you were interested in, you could actually stop here if you had a lithium compatible converter. But we want to be able to power our 120 volt outlets from our new battery without having to plug into shore power. And that's coming up next. Wiring the Victron MultiPlus inverter charger so that we can power our 120 volt outlets from the new battery and recharge the battery from shore power is up next. But first, we need to splice into the OEM shore power inlet and breaker box, which can be intimidating, but we're gonna show you how to make it easy. The parts we're using in this chapter are from the Explorus Life 12 volt MultiPlus 3K wiring kit and the 30 amp OEM RV splice kit. We fastened the MultiPlus mounting plate to the wall so we could get exact measurements for our wires. This cover right here is actually just for um, keeping anything out of the inverter that could drip on it. But since we are installing this into a spot that is fully covered and fully protected, we're going to take this off so that it can get some better cooling. We hung the MultiPlus to the mounting plate, screwed the bottom of the MultiPlus to the wall, and remove the front cover. Now we're making all of our wires out of the camper instead of on our studio tabletop because these big 4 out wires need to be really exact lengths to get them to fit where we needed them to for good wire management. And I was just being lazy and didn't want to walk back and forth. For our DC wires, we put our negative 4 out wire onto the negative stud and replace the washer, lock washer, and nut. Then we put our positive wire on the positive stud and replace the hardware in the same fashion. The equipment ground wire attaches at the far back corner of the MultiPlus on top of the serrated washer with the washer, lock washer, and nut on top of the lug. The negative wire is going to the negative bus bar and we replace our washer, lock washer, and nut and tighten. 
we put the separator back in place, put the mega fuse in place, put the positive wire onto the fuse, replace the washers, lock washers, and nuts. And next we're going to put the equipment ground wire on the center stud on the negative bus bar in the exact same way we just did with the negative wire. And then we tightened all of our hardware. Next is the VE bus smart dongle, which allows us to control the MultiPlus via Bluetooth on our phone. The side of the power wire with the ferrules goes into the B plus and B minus terminals on the smart dongle. The positive and negative ring terminals go onto the positive and negative battery studs on the MultiPlus. Then we plugged in an RJ45 cable into the dongle and the other end goes to either of the VE bus ports on the MultiPlus. There's some double-sided tape on the back of the dongle and we're simply going to stick it to the underside of the MultiPlus. Now it's time for our AC wiring. We fed our 10-3 wire from the Explorer's Life splice kit through the wall and stripped back the outer sheathing and the wire insulation. Then we crimped ferrules onto each of the wires. One wire is going into the AC input, black to line, white to neutral, and green to ground. And the other is going to the AC output with the same colors to the same terminals. The other end of both of these wires are going to the junction box from the Explorer's Life 30 amp OEM splice kit. We're going to be cutting into the OEM 10-3 wire that goes into the back of the breaker box. This will give us a wire that is going to the breaker box and a wire that is coming from the shore power inlet. For the wires coming from the MultiPlus, we stripped back the insulation and crimped on our ferrules. Okay. Then the wires going to the AC in on the MultiPlus get connected to the wires coming from the transfer switch. And the wires coming from the AC out on the MultiPlus go to the wires going to the breaker box. Here's a graphic of how that looks. We then screwed the splice kit onto the floor, put the cover in place, and added some labels for added clarity. Lastly, you'll want to disable your OEM converter. In most campers, there is a converter breaker in the breaker box. We've simply turned this off and put a piece of tape across the breaker to indicate that it should not be toggled back on. If the converter is left on, then when you aren't connected to shore power, the batteries will be powering the MultiPlus inverter, which would then power the breaker box, which would power the converter, which would power the batteries, which would then power the MultiPlus. This is all just a big circle of power loss that turning the converter off fixes. Now let's test it out. We turn our master battery switch on, turn the inverter on, and now test some of our 120 volt loads. Our batteries are powering our MultiPlus and our MultiPlus is powering our breaker box, which is powering all of our 120 volt loads. We can even turn the air conditioner on. Now we can go plug into shore power and the inverter will automatically switch over to powering the system via shore power and charging our batteries with the remaining, which we can see on our BMB712. And if we turned on the generator and disconnected from shore power, the same thing would happen. If we used a 30 amp to 15 amp adapter to connect to a standard household outlet and use the Victron Connect app connected to our VEBus smart dongle, to turn our shore power input current limit to below 15 amps so that we don't overload that circuit and trip the breaker and turn on a heavy load like the air conditioner. The power assist feature from the MultiPlus would take the power available from shore and then invert the remaining power needed from the battery bank to power that load from an underpowered shore power connection. Now you'll notice that we did not program the MultiPlus and it does need to be programmed, but if you buy a MultiPlus through shop.explorus.life, we're gonna program it for you if you're using Battleborn batteries. Now, if you don't want to use Battleborn batteries, that's fine and we'll still sell you a MultiPlus, but you will also need to purchase a MK3 USB programming dongle and get with your battery manufacturer of choice so that they can provide the charging specs that they recommend for their batteries and they will hopefully be able to give you the specs that you need for your MultiPlus.
or you can just buy battleborn batteries and a multi plus from us and save yourself the hassle with the victron multi plus wired we're now able to charge our battery from shore power and power our 120 volt outlets from our battery but in order to be a true off-grid rig we need to be able to charge from solar and that's up next This camper came from the factory as solar ready, which does not mean that you can just put some solar panels on the roof and call it good. In this chapter, we're going to install solar panels and a charge controller and show you how to use the factory solar ready wiring so that we can charge our new battery bank. The parts we're using in this chapter are from the Explorus Life Smart Solar MPPT 15085 wiring kit and the single roof array wiring kit for solar ready RVs. Now it's time to wire up our solar charge controller with these wires. We put our two gauge positive wire into the positive battery terminal and tighten to spec and then put our two gauge negative wire onto the negative battery terminal and tighten that as well. The two gauge equipment ground wire connects to this side of the charge controller with the serrated washer between the lug and the heat sink and the washer and lock washer on top. And then we added ferrules to our 10 gauge solar wire and put those into the PV terminals. We fasten the charge controller to the wall. Next, we're going to connect the wires from the charge controller to the Lynx distributor. First, we're going to make sure the master disconnect switch is off. Put the negative wire in place. Replace the washer, lock washer, and nut and tighten. Snap the separator back into place. Place the mega fuse onto the positive bus bar. Place the positive wire onto the fuse. Replace the washers, lock washers, and nuts. And then we attach the equipment ground wire to the far left stud of the negative bus bar on the Lynx distributor. And then we tightened all of our hardware. Next, we remove the plugs from our solar isolator and replace them with cable glands. And mounted our solar isolator to the floor with screws. We loosen the screw terminals and put the 10 gauge wires coming from the charge controller into the top left two terminals. And put the 10 gauge wires that will go to the pre-existing solar wires into the bottom left two terminals, matching red to red and black to black, top to bottom. And then we replace the solar isolator cover. This camper came solar ready from the factory and the solar ready wires are in this compartment and even better, they are labeled which one is which. So we are going to connect those up, but the solar wires that are coming in from the roof are coming down here. Um, these wires actually go up under the countertop, which would be easier to connect them anyway. So I'm just gonna push those up uh, in there and then we'll do the connections in there. And the other ones that are going to the OEM battery are going to just be capped off. We're not gonna use them because we're connecting to the battery via the Lynx distributor. We put butt splice connectors onto the solar ready wires, which connects our solar isolator to the factory installed solar wires that run to the roof. Next is time for solar panels, starting with mounting our solar panel Z brackets to the panels with the included hardware, and then repeating that four times per panel for all six panels, and then move them onto the roof. Move the panels into place, and then clean a spot on the roof with alcohol. Remove the paper from the 3M VHB double-sided tape that we added to each mounting foot. Put the panel in place, Secure the bracket with large self-tapping screws. These three panels are going to be in series. So we're going to be connecting the positives to the negatives and the negatives to the positives of each panel. And then these three that are going on this side are also going to be in series and then we'll connect the two series in parallel together. Um, but we're gonna actually go ahead and connect these wires together before we flip the panels over because we think it's gonna make our lives easier and then repeated the process for every bracket of every panel. Now we did have to make some jumper wires with PV connectors on the ends so the panels would reach each other and the series strings of panels would reach the PV branch circuit combiners. Okay, we have our two series strings wired up and now we have 
the negatives and positives coming into right here. So we're gonna go ahead and make these final connections into the combiners and then into the uh, solar entry gland. Negatives to branch combiner, to the roof entry gland, and then fuses to branch combiner, positives to fuses, then combiner to roof entry gland. And then we put die core sealant on top of all of the mounting screws. Next, we're going to make sure the master disconnect switch is turned on and the solar isolator is turned on. And the smart solar charge controller should show up in the Victron Connect app. Tap to select, put in the default password, and update the firmware as necessary. Follow any on-screen directions. And once we're at the main screen, we can tap the cog to access the settings. And here is the cheat sheet that we're using for programming the charge controller specifically for these batteries. And we are charging, but not very much. I feel like every single time on this channel that I try to show off how good our new solar panels are charging, it's always um, just really cloudy. We've been dodging rainstorms all afternoon. It's actively thundering. It's about to start raining again. So uh, tomorrow when the sun comes back out, I'll have Grace overlay the screenshot that I'll take right here <laughs> to prove that these solar panels are actually working. Now we have fully functioning solar charging, but we also want the option for alternator charging for long drives at night or during cloudy weather. And that's coming up next. This motorhome comes with a factory installed battery isolator, which does allow for fast charging, but it does not have any kind of voltage or amperage regulation. So we're going to install a DC to DC charger for safer charging. The parts we're using in this chapter are the Victron Orion DC to DC charger and the Explorus Life Orion DC to DC charger wiring kit. Now, before we get started, there is a little green jumper pin in the Orion box. We're gonna need this later and it's very important, but it's easy to lose. Don't lose this. Tape it to the front of the charger so you don't lose it. We attached our lugs, ferrules, and heat shrink to our six gauge wire and we put the short red six gauge wire onto the positive output terminal. We put the short black six gauge wire into the negative output terminal and tighten both of those to spec. And then we put the long red six gauge wire into the positive input terminal and the long black six gauge wire into the negative input terminal and tighten both of those to spec. With the Orion pre-wired, we moved into the camper and secured it to the wall with the output wires going through the floor where they would run to the engine bay. Next, we're going to connect the wires to the Lynx distributor. But first, we're going to make sure our solar isolator and master disconnect switch are off. Put the negative wire in place. Replace the washer, lock washer, and nut, and tighten. Snap the separator back into place. Place the mega fuse onto the positive bus bar and the positive wire onto the fuse. Replace the washers, lock washers, and nuts, and tighten. For the wire going to the engine start battery, we started from our Orion, fed our wire down and under the truck, keeping clear of any hot or moving parts, and secured it in place with plenty of zip ties and cable clamps as necessary. Then we pulled it out of the engine bay and cleaned it up with some loom and heat shrink. Then using the barrel of our lug as our measurement, we stripped back some insulation from the negative wire and crimped on a 5 16 inch lug and added some heat shrink. We removed the nut from the negative battery terminal and added our lug and tightened. Then we connected our MRBF fuse holder to the positive terminal. With our MRBF fuse, positive wire, and hardware on top of the fuse holder and tightened. And now for programming. Going to make sure the master switch is turned on and the Orion should show up in the Victron Connect app. Tap to select, put in the default password, and update the firmware as necessary. Follow any on-screen directions. And once we're at the main screen, tap the cog to access the settings. And here is the cheat sheet that we're using for programming the Orion specifically for these batteries. With the Orion programmed, we can put in our green remote jumper wire in place on the bottom of the Orion, 
And now we can see that our Orion is in the bulk charge phase. Now we can see that power coming through on the BMV712 as well. And then if we turn the solar isolator on, we can also see some solar power being added to that. We can leave solar, alternator, and shore power all on at the same time as they will all automatically regulate and synchronize as necessary. And we also have a video where we installed dual Orions for faster charging in our transit, and we'll link to that video in the description below. Pretty much every motorhome on the road comes with a battery isolator, which actually does allow charging of the house battery from the engine just as is. Now, we're installing a DC to DC charger uh, in parallel with the isolator, and I wanna talk a little bit about why. An isolator does not provide any kind of voltage regulation or amperage regulation. That means that whatever voltage that the alternator is putting out, that is what the house batteries are being charged at. The alternator, the power it's putting out, is also just flowing as fast as it possibly can into our lithium batteries since they can be charged very quickly, but that can be hard on the alternator and decrease its lifespan. Now you can go without the DC to DC charger like we're installing in this chapter and just rely on the isolator to charge the batteries given that you understand those two kind of risks that go along with it. But since this is my mom's camper, I don't want her having issues. If she's across the country, I won't be able to go help her out very easily. So I want to set her up for success. So we're going to make it so that this is disabled by a switch. And this is the ground wire up here on the top that allows the isolator to function. We found where this wire goes up underneath the dash, which is near the emergency start momentary switch. And we're gonna put a secondary switch in line that is going to disable the isolator unless the switch is in the on position. That's gonna disable the isolator, but is still going to allow us to use the emergency start jump feature of the isolator to jump the starting battery from the house battery if necessary. Now mom has an off-grid capable motorhome, but if you have a different type of rig, we've got a full video playlist of full installs on other types of campers, and we're gonna link to that and more down in the pinned comment below. If you want to upgrade your camper electrical system, consider buying from our store. We're a small business and purchasing through us helps fund these videos that we make available for all of you each and every week. We hope you found this video helpful, and if you did, it would be awesome if you would share it with somebody or a group who you think could use it. Leave any questions you've got or new things you learned in the comment section below. Subscribe if you want to see more. To oh, I guess something. <laughs> <laughs> I felt it crawling on me for like four seconds. Subscribe if you want to see more videos like this one, and we will see you in the next video.